Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. Have you ever asked yourself if you're praying right, if you're praying amiss, if your prayers are working? Well, I believe in this season that God is calling us to return to prayer. And many people faint in prayer or give up on praying um, for people and things that God has put on their heart because they think their prayers are not working or they don't think they know how to pray or their prayers are not effective. So in this video, I am going to be teaching on prayer, what prayer is, what prayer does for us and how to pray. And I'm teaching on this. Um, I'm actually going to share and pull clips from the video I did um, and Saturday morning prayer when I taught on prayer. So that will be coming up. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I believe that the Lord is saying return to prayer. The prophetic word I gave over the new year or the new month is return, the word return. And that's because I believe that God is calling his people to return wholeheartedly to him. Maybe you say, I am not, I haven't turned away from him, but maybe your heart is divided and God wants you to turn with your whole heart toward him. And so the way that we first turn to God is in prayer and worship and adoration and praise. And so I believe that God is calling his people back to a consecrated time, a consecrated life, and you may already have a consecrated life, but wherever you're at, he's calling you deeper still to return to him, to return and turn to him. So it's the word that we find for uh, restore, for to turn back, to turn towards, to return. This is the same Greek or Hebrew word in the Bible. And so I'm focusing this week on returning to prayer or turning your heart toward God more fully in prayer because God is calling his people back to the original purpose and plan for which he called them some people would call it revival and that is perfectly okay but revival is in essence turning back to God wholeheartedly when there a revival breaks out, it hits the church first. And then from there, there's a wave and a move of God that brings uh, ushers other people in when the church is revived. And the church revives by spending intimate time with the Lord. Corporately, yes, but also personally in our secret place. And so how do we do that? We turn to God in prayer. We set aside time for prayer to be with the Lord. And so um, return to prayer. That That's what this video is about. Don't turn away from God, but be restored in your relationship to God through prayer. Pray, keep, continue in prayer. Continue to pray for the people that he's put on your heart. So this video is going to help you if you thought, if you think maybe my prayers are not working, maybe you think um, that you don't know how to pray or you used to pray all the time and you just lost your flow and you need some inspiration. You need uh, to be that fire to be ignited. You need the tools, um, the inspiration to begin in your prayer life again. Well, that this video is going to break that down and encourage you to continue in prayer, not just praying for the people and the things that God has called you to stand in the gap for, but also spending time in worship and prayer and just sitting with the Lord because the Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. He shows us the path of life. We're in his presence. So everything that you need, all the answers that you're looking for, they're not just found in prayer telling God what we need but it's found in knowing the Father's voice knowing the Holy Spirit's voice and being able to find him in that secret place and hear from the Father so one part of prayer is speaking what we our, our hopes and dreams and our needs, our petitions to God. But the other part is worshiping him and listening to him and then hearing his answers to us and then praising him and speaking back to him what he said over us. There comes a point in prayer where you're not praying the problem. You're not telling God about your problems, but you're 
speaking back to him in faith what he has said about your problem. I am the Lord that heals you. I am that I am. I will do everything that you need me to do. He gives us answers in prayer, but we have to have a listening ear and we have to be willing to go beyond just hearing, but to listen, to know his voice and to listen to God in prayer. And that's what prayer is really about because we can be praying one way, but the Bible says the spirit makes intercession for us. And so God can bring from heaven. You can think you're supposed to be praying one thing, but when you have a relationship with God in your prayer time and even just walking with him during your day, he will direct you and tell you something that you didn't come, that didn't come from your mind because God is a spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. And he speaks to us by his Holy Spirit, of course, by his word and other people. But he wants to have a personal hearing relationship with you where you know his voice and you listen to him and you follow and obey his word. And that happens through prayer. So I hope that you are blessed by this video, this teaching on prayer. Um, God bless you. Until next time. Um, I pray that you be blessed and be encouraged. And if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not subscribed and share this with someone who you know needs to know more about prayer. God bless you. So I want to talk about what is prayer and the importance of intercessory prayer. You may already know this, but I want to talk about it this morning and then before we get into prayer and why it's important for us to intercede. And so prayer is to make a request, to ask a petition, to also worship or to supplicate or put a petition before the Lord. So worship is part of prayer. And oftentimes we go into prayer and we, we're giving God our list and we're going down the line of what we want, but we haven't even entered into his presence. So when I come on here, I don't pray the way that I pray in my prayer closet because in my prayer closet, a lot of my time is spent getting into the Lord's presence and just spending time in the Lord's presence. Because once you learn how to enter your secret place, it becomes easier as long as you're not having anything that is blocking or grieving the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we have to spend some time repenting so that we can go in. But the most important part of prayer is to enter into his uh, presence with worship and his gates with praise to to, uh, with thanksgiving, but to worship the Lord, to worship the Lord and come before his presence, to access the Lord's presence. Now we can always lift up a prayer. And if we have that spiritual connect connection with God, he can hear us as we're going about our day. But when we're interceding, we want to make sure that we have worshiped the Lord. And I don't want to say we go by feelings, but there's a knowing if that makes sense. There's a song by Carrie Job that says, when you walk in the room, when you enter God's presence, he's ever present, but then there is a Shekinah glory, a heavier glory, a weight of glory, a, a, a felt presence of a um, rhema, if that makes sense, where rhema is for the word, but I hope I'm making sense. Um, to enter God's presence when you know that the holy God of the universe is here. And so when you enter his presence, um, then I'm going to talk about petition. So we can request, we can ask something of God, we can uh, petition him, we, we need to worship him right? We can speak decrees. There's prayers of decrees and where we declare his word and say about our circumstances, what God, what God said, those are faith-filled prayers where we're standing on what God has already said in his presence. We've already broken through. 
and we've already got a word from God and we don't have to keep on asking him. We know that even though we don't see it, it is done and we're believing God for it despite what our circumstances say. That is a form of prayer. To come, confession, profession of your faith is a form of prayer. So I don't know what area of prayer you are at today. Are you needing an answer? Are you standing in faith? Are you petitioning God for something new or something you haven't yet received an answer to? Sometimes it's in his word and we're waiting on God to answer. And he said, it's beloved, that's in my word. But then there is intercession. And it's to go before the Lord on behalf of another person, place, or thing. Isaiah, excuse me, Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, it says, I looked for a man that would stand in the gap, but I couldn't find any. That wouldn't destroy the land. And so he was looking for a man to stand in the gap or to intercede on the behalf of his people. The gap is the breach, the broken place um, to repair the hedge of protection. And so sometimes God is looking for us not just to pray for our own needs. And that's okay if that's what you need to do. And that's what he's called you to do. And that's what is um, what is on your heart to do. But sometimes the Lord will lay it on your heart or give you an assignment to pray for someone else, to intercede even for a nation or a land or a people that you don't know unless the Lord would tell you. But more often than not, he gives us to pray. Let me know if you can hear me because sometimes I talk low. So let me know if you guys can hear me. More often than not, he gives you to intercede on behalf of your people. Um, the people that he entrusts you with, the relationships that he entrusts you with, those that are connected to you, maybe not all backslidden, but who are in need of prayer. He gives you to intercede for those around you, those relationships, uh, maybe your workplace, your community, your family, your household, your enemies. <laughs> And so you intercede, to intercede is to petition God on behalf of another. And then I want to tell you, we talk, so that's what prayer is. And I want to talk about why we pray. Men are always praying, not to faint, God says. We pray because there are certain things that only God can do through prayer and oftentimes fasting. Sometimes when you need a breakthrough, there is a posture of prayer. Number two, prayer ushers us into the presence of God. In his presence, he reveals his plan. He warns us of things to come. Sometimes God will give you a prophetic word for something good that is about to take place. But he also will warn you of things to come so that you can know how to deal with things. A lot of prophetic intercession is petitioning and praying and standing on the gap um, in, on behalf of people who God has spoken to you about. It has warned you about something coming. That he wants to turn. There goes that word return, which I'm going to get into. To return to God. He wants to turn it. It's a word that means, sh that is shub. Shub, shub in the Hebrew. And it has so many different meanings. It means to turn back, to turn forward, to return to God to return to your ways and not to God. And so God is calling us to return, not only to prayer, but some other things that we need to return. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because the things that he wants you to return to, we want to identify those. The reason why he wants you to return to prayer is because there's some things that he wants you to 
pray, some people that he wants you to pray for and even yourself. And so it ushers us into the presence of God. Prayer gives us strength to not faint in the day of adversity, to overcome, to break generational curses. Prayer also um, gives us um, the wisdom of God. He reveals his secrets in prayer. He gives us instruction, direction, and correction in prayer. As we're looking and we're asking what are we should do, he reveals his will in prayer, his specific will for you. When you have a prayer life, he leads and guides you very much more easily. So he can say, go this way, turn that way. No, don't do that because he has your ear. The prayer um, puts his ear to the spirit so that we can hear what the Lord is saying. But sometimes we fall off in prayer or we get repetitious in prayer and we don't actually enter his presence and make it about fellowship with God. Because the thing is fellowship with God in that time of fellowship and worshiping him, he's going to reveal. But we often go in and ask, God, what am I supposed to do? God, why is that? And he says, if you would just trust me and, and come into my presence to worship me and to have relationship with me and honor me, it is my good pleasure to give my children the kingdom. I delight to to reveal my plan to you. I've been waiting for you to come to me that I may speak to you about what I have for you, that I may show you what I have for you. But you have to come in behind the veil because when we think about, I think of Romans um, 8, what is it, 28 or 38, um, where it says, he makes all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose. That word purpose goes back to a Hebrew word. That means the showbread or the bread of the presence that are called according to what is revealed, what is known, what is set and forever settled in heavens in the presence of the Lord that the enemy can't get to. And so... I know we think of purpose, but it's not, though it, it's a different word than we would think. And I believe that's the only place it's found in the, I could be wrong, in the, uh, in the New Testament. Let me go here. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose. A setting forth a proposal and intention, specifically the showbread in the temple as exposed before God. Purpose, showbread. It's actually 12 times in the New Testament. And so he reveals his purpose to you in his presence. And so it's important to access his presence when we pray. Hallelujah. Because all the things that we're praying, that we are just praying out of our minds and our emotions, those are good. And that's where we start. But God has a plan for you. He has something written in his book for you. Hallelujah. And he even has an assignment for you, an intercessory assignment for you, um, an assignment for you, just like in class, when you complete one thing, you get another thing. And so God is calling us to return to prayer, to return to his presence. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then number three, prayer keeps us in, keeps us. The word says, I'm, I'm reading my notes, in the fire, in the flood, and it allows us to see things from God's perspective. So when you're going through the fire, in the flood. Prayer will keep you and allow you not to faint because you can see the end. Hebrews 12 and it says verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before us endured the cross, Lord bless your word, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Prayer gives you access to God's strength. So when you're going through, ha, even though there's a shame, even though there's a pain, even though there's an agony, you can keep going 
because you see, again, the one who sees you. We talked about prayer reveals God's correction, direction, and instruction. It empowers and equips you. Prayer is the greatest work. that we can do. And every great work of God begins through prayer. Now there's works. Mm. The word says, unless the Lord builds a house, they that labor build in vain. Didn't say they won't build it, but it says they labor in vain. And that word vain, glory to God, means idolatry. Psalms 127 verse 1. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain who build it. And except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watches, but in vain. And this word vain means destructive, to ruin, useless, idle. And so it's the most important um, work because it lays the foundation for God's will so that we don't labor in vain. It doesn't mean we can't build. We can do our own thing. Try it. Doesn't work. Because the enemy will try and distract you from doing what God wants you to do. He will try and show you um, good things that aren't really God, right? That are kingdom things, that are kingdom work to distract you from what God called you to do. Doesn't mean it's not good, but it's God's will for you. That's how we know God's will. And sometimes the main labor is in prayer. Glory to God. And so how do we pray? I talked about this, if you got my email yesterday, away from the crowd. Now, I'm there is a corporate prayer where we come together as believers. I join corporate prayer at church and go in and pray. But then there is a prayer where we where we go into our prayer closet, where we go into our secret place and we pour out our hearts before the Lord and we listen to God's heart. We hear what God would say to us. Right. And so you do that away from the crowd. Um, so you pray away. You pray early. And then how else do you pray? Often and continually. Often and continually. You pray the word. Amen. And you pray with confidence. So Mark, I'm using my phone. Mark 1 and 35 says, and in the morning, Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he prayed. So he prayed away. He prayed early. And then let's go to Luke 5, 16. Five sixteen says, he, speaking of Jesus, withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And so he won't, he rose early and he went away to pray. Let's go to, I believe this is Revelations, my chicken scratch. Revelations 12, 11. You pray the word. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they love their lives not unto the death. We could even quote Abraham that he called those things that be not as though they were. You know, I love that. And in uh, chapter four of Romans, we could talk of Romans 10. Um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but we overcome him. We're in the courts of heaven where the enemy accuses us day and night. That's what the verse above says, that the enemy accuses us day and night. Revelations 12, 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which is accused before our God. The accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them talk about us, the saints, before our God day and night, and they overcame him. 
by the blood of the lamb and the word accused. That's a judicial, that's a, that's a legal term. There is a court of heaven and the enemy goes before God, the judge of all and accuses us. Ha, my God. But there's a prayer where you go in and you speak what God said. You overcome him by the blood of the lamb and you plead the blood. Sometimes my prayer has to be, I plead the blood. That's a legal term. When he says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Glory to God. And he accused them. Ha, we plead the blood. Glory to God. Anyway, okay, let me come back. Then we have 1 John 5.14. Yes, God. Ha, yeah, I'm not so cold. I'm not. Sheke bokor namahaya. 5 and 14 says, and this is the confidence that we ask in him, that if we have, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we, that we have the petition that we've asked of him. And so that we've desired or asked of him. And so we pray with confidence. That means we pray with confidence. This is the confidence that we have in him. And when should you pray? When Before a big decision, pray for your heart, from your heart and not just from your head or what you think is right. Ask God when you don't know what to pray, he will give you what to pray. And he wants us people oftentimes, and I'm guilty of doing it, and I had to learn not to do it. Don't ask God about big decisions, right? I had to learn to bring God into everything. People marry people based off of their feelings and never ask God because they're already in their feelings. Is this the person for me? Is this your will? God wants you to marry the right person. There are people in relationships right now, marriages right now, that are not the ones that God had for them, but now they're in covenant. Because they didn't ask God. They may have asked friends. They may have asked their pastor. They may have asked um, themselves. They may have went with what they were feeling. You could feel good about something that's not God. You can want something that God says that's not for you. Take the wrong job. Go to the wrong city. Go to the wrong church. Take the wrong position. It's not just relationships. Ask God. And so this, those are reasons why we pray. 